Hello guys, uh, welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll again go through the next uh, unit of the building side-by-side -side extension on SAP BTP learning journey. So in the previous videos, we have covered unit one, unit two, and unit three. Now we will go to unit four, which talks about adding a custom business logic. So the first lesson is explaining event handling in CAP. So what is event handling in CAP? We will go through it. So this is one scenario. Say, for example, your company is planning to build an extension using the SAP Cloud Application Programming Model. You are planning to build an extension application. Now, there are generic service handlers which are provided by the CAP framework, uh, which provides support for the standard CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. So say, for example, there are multiple entities which you are exposing from your uh, OData service or from your CAP service. The creation, reading, updation, and deletion of those entities, they are out of the box automatically supported by the CAP service. Okay, But say, for example, in your scenario, uh, for your application, uh, these standard operations do not satisfy your requirements. You want to implement some custom business logic as well. So, say, for example, when you are creating an entity, say, for example, there is a, an entity called product. When you are creating an entity, you want to execute some uh, custom business logic as well. Say, for example, when you are reading a particular entity, you want to perform some other business logic as well. So, for all these custom business logic, uh, you would need to implement event handling. So for that, you need to understand the concept of event handlers. Uh, let us go through this quick video. In CAP, everything that happens at runtime is an event that is sent to a service. They are a powerful means to extend CAP. An event handler is simply a method that is executed when something happens in the application. If you need a specific service to react to a specific event, you register an event handler using srv.phase.event where SRV is the instance of the service that you are extending. Phase is one of on, before, or after C-section event phases. And event is any kind of named event as a string. For example, read. Once a service has an event handler for a specific event, it becomes a consumer for that event. Using SRV.emit event, a service can send arbitrary events. These events then get consumed by other services that have event handlers registered for the respective event. So here, uh, what it is saying is that uh, in CAP, uh, whatever operation is invoked from the UI application uh, to the CAP service, uh, it, it, is, it gets triggered in the form of an event. And uh, those events, you can implement custom event handlers for those events in your CAP service using this particular syntax. So this is the service. And then the phase, which means that uh, there are different phases available, say, for example, on, after, and before. So when you want to execute uh, this event handler, and then what is the event? So your service it becomes an event handler when you implement an event handler using this particular syntax and your service can also emit events uh, of its own and those events can be handled by uh, separate uh, event handlers as well. So we will go through this syntax and we will see how event handlers work. So this is the way to introduce, so introducing registering event handlers. So this is how you register event handlers. So uh, for till now, we have seen that uh, in our CAP application, when we create a CAP service, uh, we create a CDS file of our, for our CAP service. Now, for that particular service, we have to implement uh, a handler file, okay, a handler. So the handler will be implemented in a, a JavaScript file. So there are one, two, three, four, five ways in which you can uh, name or create this implementing uh, JavaScript file, which will uh, which will implement the event handlers for your particular service. So this is option one. It says that the JavaScript file is placed next to the .cds file. The .cds file is the file basically which exposes the service where you define your uh, CAP service. And uh, you, you create a separate JavaScript file which is placed next to the CDS file. Uh, okay. Then the JavaScript file needs to have the same name as the CDS file. So if the JavaScript file has the same name as the CDS file, 
the framework automatically hooks up the implementation to the service file. So the CAP framework will automatically identify that this JavaScript file is the uh, handler implementation for this particular service because they both have the same name. That is option one. Then there is option two. Uh, here we set the link through the IMPL annotation in your CDS model uh, file. So you, you will have your .cds file where you define your service. So in that .cds file, you add an annotation called IMPL like this, at IMPL. So at IMPL, then you mention the JavaScript file name, which is the implementation for your uh, service event handler. So uh, where the respective service implementation can be found. This is useful if you have diverging file names or you want to make it very explicit that the two files belong together. So you can have different file names in this case, a different name for your .cds file and a different file name for your implementing JavaScript file. But you can make use of the IMPL annotation to connect the two. And this IMPL annotation is mentioned in your .cds file, which defines your service. Then there are other options as well, three, four and five for which they have mentioned that they are fair, fairly advanced and you used with the you used with the CDS serve API to bootstrap your services on your own. Five, this is used when dealing with external services. So I think if we understand option one and two uh, for now, it should be uh, sufficient for us to get started. Now, this is the uh, like separate syntax here we can go through it. So event handlers registered via a service.on, service.before, service.after, all except a request object as argument. Okay. So first of all, let us see the syntax for uh, registering the event handler in your JavaScript implementation file. So SRV will be your current service. Uh, before is the, this is the phase, right? This is the phase that uh, before and then this is the event. So what it is saying is that, and this is the orders, orders is the entity. So say for example, what it means is that when you are creating an order or when you are updating an order, before that you have to execute, the service have, has to execute this logic. So this is what it means. Service, this is the phase, this is the event, and this is the entity. So before create an update of orders, the service should execute this custom handler logic. This is what it means. Now, this service, okay, when, whenever the, this handler is invoked, a request object is passed to the, to the handler. So this request object, it basically contains the information about the input data uh, on which this service handler has to work. So we can see here that request objects are passed in the event handlers. They provide all sorts of information about the context, like the request data or the method, like get, post, and so on. So this request object will contain that, okay, which method has been invoked, uh, what is the query, or what is the data on which, um, I mean, this, this will contain the data which will be processed by our event handler. So all this information is contained in the request object, which is passed to the event handler. Now, request objects are also used to provide error messages back to the client or to register another set of handlers for the request lifecycle. So we can use the same request object to pass some error message back to the client. So when this custom handler gets executed, uh, say for example, if whether it is successful or whether it fails, that we can that information or that error message, we can pass it back to the client using this request object itself. Okay, so an example. So here it is, here is an example. Think of a simple application which manages your company's IT inventory. Okay. So for each asset category, there is an entity for you. So there are different entities uh, in your, say for example, in your service, entities are notebooks, phones, and tablets. Now these entities are exposed by the inventory service. So you have inventory service, and these are the entities which this in inventory service exposes. The service provides an OData API, yes, which enables you uh, to interact with the entities. Now, say you want to see the current inventory of notebooks. You want to see how, what, how many notebooks are there. Now you'll perform a GET request. So this GET request will be triggered from your UI application. So to handle this GET request, uh, like in a plain vanilla case, CAP will provide this, um, this particular functionality out of the box. You don't have to implement anything to, uh, you, you don't have to write any custom code for this GET request, okay? 
So you perform the get request to the inventory slash notebooks. This is the service name and this is the entity name. This is the entity name notebooks. Now within cap, a read event is triggered for the notebooks entity. This read event is triggered. There is a built-in event handler, also known as generic provider that retrieves the requested data from the database on a read event for the notebooks entity. So this is a built-in functionality provided whenever a read event is triggered, it will retrieve the requested data. Okay, now, but now you have to make use of the event handler. So first of all, cap handles all, all CRUD events, create, read, update, delete out of the box. So you don't have to write any code or take any further steps uh, after defining your entities. So however, oftentimes the standard functionality does not fulfill our requirements. So now you want to implement some custom logic also. So extending the example above, now let us assume you are building a UI on top of your service. It should display when a device is eligible for uh, replacement. So whenever you are trying to retrieve uh, a particular device, it's, it should tell that when the device is eligible for a replacement. So whether a device is eligible for replacement depends on the device type, date acquisition or country. So this is just a use case. Okay. Thus, there is no easy answer. So you will have to write a custom code to find out that when the device is eligible for replacement uh, and it is dependent on this data. Now your service needs to uncover it within your entities. There is a Boolean field, say for example, in your entity, in your CDS definition, there is a field called eligible for replacement, which is set to false by default. Whenever there is a read event for any of the entities in your inventory service, whenever there is a read after the entities have been read. So see, this is the phase after the entities have been read. You want to have a custom handler, okay, to find out whether the individual devices are eligible for replacement or not. So this is the scenario for which you have to implement a custom handler. So this is the code uh, which will which you will have to write in your uh, implementing JavaScript file, which will be the handler for your CDS file. So cds.serve inventory service. So this, this means for the, for the current service, this is the phase after read. So after the read has been performed and star means on any of the entity after the read has been performed, you, I mean, this logic will be executed and it will tell whether the device is eligible for replacement or not. So the code defines that after each read of any entity, the eligibility for replacement should be calculated. So this is just the uh, explanation of the logic method loops through each line of the data that was fetched by the generic service handler. So you can see that uh, each devices, this is how the logic has been written here. Instead of registering the handler method for any entity, you could also register the event handler for a specific entity. So instead of writing star here, you can also mention the specific entity uh, for which you want this logic to get executed. Okay. Now event phases. So this is the phase after. Events are processed in three phases. There are three phases before, on and after. These are the only possible values which you can mention here for phase. So the phase in which the event handler should be called needs to be specified. So in this example, we specify the after phase. So it is possible to register multiple event handlers for each event phase. So for this phase, for this dot after read, you can have multiple handlers here. So this will be one handler. You can have another handler for uh, after read for any entity and like all the handlers will get executed. So specified. It is possible to register multiple event handlers for each event. Likewise, a single handler can handle multiple events also. So this one single handler, it can handle multiple events also. So it is like you can say n is to n relationship kind of. So the case of an ex in case of an external service, there wouldn't be anything that the framework could do in case of an external service. So you must provide an on handler, but you can also use the on hook to override generic CRUD handlers. So maybe this we will go through in detail uh, later. Uh, for now, I think this is the example which we have gone through. So in summary, now we understand the concept of event handlers in CAP and we know why event handlers are uh, required and uh, we know like as a basic syntax how we can write a custom event handler. 
and we know that okay a request object is provided which provides the data uh, on which our custom custom event handler can work and this is how we connect the handler file with the uh, cds file which defines our service so this is all what we have covered in this particular lesson